Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with ExtremePreppers.com and today we are going to look into the issue of home wind turbines. And the question is, is that will home wind turbines pay for themselves or produce enough electricity to really be useful? We know that as preppers and homesteaders we want to be as self-sufficient as possible and so we want to kind of look in and run the numbers on home wind turbines. Uh, what I'm going to be going over today is uh, I have this wind turbine shown here, which is the state-of-the-art ROM 3.5 kilowatt wind turbine. I had it installed in 2009, October of 2009. Now we are in March of 2017, so I'm going on eight years with this thing. We're going to look at it and see, do wind turbines make sense for home use? Okay, so... I will come over here and get uh, the numbers out and we will just go through them, okay? And I think I need to get out of the way here so that you can see me a little bit. You can see the numbers a little better there. Okay. So let's go through this and see what it looks like. I, again, had this system installed at my home, my little homestead, in October of 2009. It's now March 2017, and so I have about eight years' experience with this system. And the plant size, uh, the uh, wind turbine, can produce 3,500 watts of electricity. So as you're looking into this, you typically do sort of a simple back-of-the-envelope calculation to see if this thing would make sense. So that's 3,500 uh, watts that you could produce. You could produce that for 24 hours a day and so theoretically you could get 84,000 watt hours per day or 84 kilowatt hours per day. Okay. Typical cost for electricity would be about 10 cents a kilowatt hour. So you could say times 0.1. Say this thing could generate $8.50 uh, of electricity per day. Could pretty much run. Uh, could pretty much run my house on that. Okay. So that sort of rough back of the envelope calculations as you're thinking about buying the system seems to make sense. Now I should say that my house is at an ideal location for wind. I'm on a hill and so it's always a nice wind there. And in addition, if you look down here across the highway within about two miles of my house is a mega wind farm where there are hundreds of the massive, you know, multi-megawatt wind turbines. And so you know they researched that very carefully, so they put the big wind farms in the ideal location for wind. And so you can sort of see that my house would be about as good as you're ever going to do with wind. And knowing and seeing those big wind turbines go in, I decided to get uh, I decided to get one. At the time, the ROM was the state of the art. It was the best performing wind turbine that you could get for home use. And so I got that one. Let's run the numbers now. Okay, so the turnkey cost for my system was $35,000. Now, if you looked at these things online, I don't know how much the wind turbine itself cost, uh, some number of thousands of dollars, but besides the wind turbine, you've got to mount it. And it's a pretty big construction project to get one of these things mounted. And so I just had a contractor come in and do the whole thing. So he did the foundation for the turbine. It included the tower. It included the ditch to get the buried electric line to my house. It included the inverter in my garage, the installation, everything turned out to be a cost of about uh, cost of about $35,000. Now understand I am a careful shopper and so I got someone who would do a quality job. I went out for competitive bids. I really looked for it. This was the going market rate for this thing, about $35,000. Okay. Uh, when I had my solar panel installed, the 
uh, power company, the utility company, would give you an incentive to install solar, but for the wind, the utility company would not give an incentive for wind. And so I did not get any carbon incentive by installing the wind turbine. So the cost after incentive, which was nothing, the cost uh, turnkey installation cost was still $35,000. Now, there was a tax credit of about 30% at the time, and so the tax credit that I got was $10,500. And so after all was said and done, my net out-of-pocket cost was $24,500, taking into account the tax credit. Okay, so that looked like it was going to work out okay because if you looked at this getting eight dollars and fifty cents a day somewhere around there it looked like it would make sense however what we found is when we installed this thing is is that the real production that you get out of a wind turbine under almost ideal conditions <coughs> is lousy is absolutely terrible so to show that, running this thing for eight years, I have gotten a total of 11.1 .1 megawatt hours out of it, okay? That comes out to a daily production of 4,150 watts, okay? That would be 4,150 uh, 4, watt hours, okay? That would be 4.15 kilowatt hours per day. I'll say that again, 4.15 kilowatt hours per day. The going rate for electricity, round numbers would be about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And so this wind turbine, averaged over eight years of production, has produced a whopping 41 cents per day in electricity. Okay, what that means is, is that the total revenue that I produced, if you look at the electricity I'm producing or sort of defraying my electric bill, in eight years I've produced uh, $1,110 worth of electricity on a $35,000 system that ended up costing me $24,500. This is lousy. How long will it take to pay off the wind turbine or how long until the system pays for itself? $100 and 64 years. And you know this is a big mechanical spinning object. You know that it's not going to last 164 years. Neither are you and neither am, me, neither am I. And so bottom line is this wind stuff just does not work. <clears throat> now why is the case? Because again I'm like in the ideal location for wind. And one of the misconceptions about wind is, is that you think, oh, it's really windy where I live. This would be a great place for a wind turbine. Well, what you have to understand is, is that for my turbine, I believe at about 25 or 30 miles an hour, I don't remember exactly what the number is, but at 30 miles an hour, the turbine shuts itself off because if it's going too fast, it'll damage itself. And so it's got an internal braking mechanism. And if the wind is greater than 30 miles an hour, it shuts off. And so what you have to see is, is that when you get to 30 miles an hour, a little bit more, the wind turbine stay, turns off. And it doesn't want to be turning on, off, on, off, on, off. And so when it shuts down, it's programmed in to maybe stay off for an hour or two and then come back on and see if the winds have died down a little bit. Oh my goodness, so you live where it's really windy? Well, it might be shutting your wind turbine down because there's a certain speed at which they shut down. We think, okay, it's not that windy. It's always breezy where I am. This is the problem. Let's say that the optimum wind speed for wind production of these home units is, say, 30 miles an hour. It's a cubic function, okay? As the wind speed goes down, as the wind speed goes down, the energy out of the wind turbine goes down as the cubic of the deviation from that ideal wind speed. So what does that mean? That means if your wind speed is half the ideal, let's say instead of 30 miles an hour, if the wind speed is 15 miles an hour, you don't go down in energy production by a factor of two you go down in energy production by a factor of 10. And so this is what happens. If the wind speed is a little bit too fast, it turns off completely. If the wind speed is a little bit too slow, 
factor of 2, your energy goes down by a factor of 10. So there is this tiny little sliver of wind speed where you're actually producing optimally. And you're never there. Because if it gets a little bit too much, wind turbine shuts down. If it gets a little bit too little, it's not producing very much electricity. And so what I can say is, is that having this thing for eight, uh, for eight years, it is lousy. It does not work. Do not buy a home wind turbine. So how do the big ones work? Well, it's just the math is different on these great big ones. And also the big ones, the rotors adjust to the wind speed. You know, like there's pitch on the propeller of an airplane and you change the pitch to always be digging in perfectly into that wind. That's how the big ones work. The pitch of the rotors change as the wind speeds change. And so they're able to have a much, much wider wind speed uh, variation that they can be producing optimally in. On these home ones, you don't pitch the propellers. The propellers don't have pitch on them. And so you are not going to get very much production. <coughs> if you guys have had different experience, if anybody has had wind actually work out, let me know. Put comments down below. But man, producing four kilowatt hours on a $35,000 system, that just doesn't work at all. Okay, that does not work at all. Oops, I should not have done that. Let's see if I can get back to where I was. Okay, so let's look and say at the same time that I installed this uh, 3,000 Five, or this uh, 3,500 watt wind turbine, I also installed a 5 kilowatt solar system. Okay, let's look at the solar system. Installed it at the same time, been running it. The plant size for solar was uh, 5 uh, kilowatts as opposed to 3.5, or it's, uh, this is wrong, it's a 5,000 watt system. Let me correct that. So I have a 5,000 uh, 5, watt system or a 5 kilowatt uh, system. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, the turnkey cost of the solar was 25,000, so you can see it was about 10,000 less than the uh, wind turbine. The carbon incentive that I got from the power company. In other words, they wanted me to install solar. Even though I installed the solar system, they gave me $7,500 to install the system to help defray the cost. So the cost of the solar system was $17,500 compared to $35,000 for the wind turbine. The tax credit on the solar was $5,250. And so the net out-of-pocket expense for the solar system was 12,250 compared to 24,500 on the wind. Okay. Now, in this same eight-year period, the $24,500 wind system generated 11.1 .1 megawatt hours of electricity, while the solar system produced 68.6 .6 megawatt hours of electricity. Okay, So the daily production of wind was 4,150 watts of electricity to where the daily production on the solar was 25,644 watt hours. And so you can see that I'm getting like six to seven times as much electricity Average over eight years, six to seven times much uh, more electricity on the solar, and the solar system cost half of what the uh, half of what the wind did. So you can see that my return on investment for the solar is ten times what the wind is. The wind was more expensive and it produced less. And so while I'm getting forty-one cents a day worth of electricity from the wind, I'm getting $2.50, 56 cents worth of electricity from the solar. And so you can see that the solar is working way, way better than the wind is.
Okay, so I have produced six thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars worth of electricity from the solar and only one thousand one hundred and ten dollars from the wind. You can see with solar it's only going to take thirteen years to pay off <coughs> to where the uh, wind would take a hundred and sixty four years to pay off. So if you are thinking about wind or you are thinking about solar what I can say is I wish that instead of getting wind and solar, I wish that I had sized my solar system twice as big as what I did. Okay, and so that's the bottom line. Bottom line is solar pays, wind doesn't. Now I should add that for solar to pay, this analysis is, is that for solar to really pay, you have to be in an area where there's an electric company that will offer net metering. The thing that says that they have to offer you net metering, that's an old wives tale. Okay, you go back and look at my previous video that goes into more depth on these solar numbers. But solar makes sense if your utility provider offers net metering and if they give you a fair price on the money on this electricity that you're putting back on the grid. If they do, then solar makes sense. Wind does not work for home use. Solar can work if you can get the net metering done right. Okay, Paul McWhorter, I hope that you find this information useful. If you found it useful, love to hear your comments down here or your questions. Let me know what your experience has been with solar or wind or if you've tried them both. Also, if you like this video, think about giving me a thumbs up. Think about liking the video, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Paul McWhorter from ExtremePreppers.com. I will talk to you guys later.